Aston Martin's classic DB11 sports car is even more desirable in open-topped Volante form, and it's stiffer, more sophisticated and even more beautiful than its predecessor. Like its coupe counterpart, the Volante is primarily a consummate sporting luxury GT, but can also be dynamically rewarding whenever you need it to be. It's very appealing indeed. Engine and exhaust theatrics are one of the things that we think Aston Martin does better than any other brand. Have a listen. That race-ready rumble comes from the 4-litre twin-turbo V8 that Aston has borrowed from Mercedes for this car. It's the only power plant that Volante buyers can have. They're not being offered the V12 from the coupe model, but it's quite sufficient to make this car very fast indeed, offering 510 PS and a thumping 685 Newton meters of torque developed from just 2,000 RPM. That's enough to hurl this convertible to 62 miles an hour from rest in just 4.1 seconds on the way to a top speed of 187 miles an hour. As for efficiency, well, it's not catastrophic. Thanks to its engine's clever use of cylinder deactivation, this car manages 28.3 mpg on the combined cycle and 230 grams per kilometre of CO2. With the roof down like this, you can enjoy this magnificent engine all the more. But should the weather turn inclement and you need to raise the hood, you'll find that highway refinement is pretty close to the standard you get in the equivalent fixed-top model. Both DB11 variants are marketed as GT-style sports cars rather than track-tamed road burners, but this model line does at last have a sports car-style CV. Multi-link rear suspension, near-perfect weight distribution, the adoption of torque vectoring and a far stiffer chassis than the previous DB9 Volante certainly all bode well for this DB11's prowess in twistier tarmac territory. And sure enough, it handles better through the turns than any GT sports convertible weighing the best part of two tonnes has any right to. You'll start to feel that weight a little more on particularly tight secondaries, but even then the seemingly endless reserves of engine boost mask that mass very cleverly. The steering could use a touch more feel in Extremis, but otherwise it's brilliantly feelsome and is one of the parameters you can alter to suit your preferences via the GT, Sport and Sport Plus settings of the driving mode system. There's also a three-stage Bilstein adaptive damping system too. And overall, well, it's true that there are better cars you could choose in this segment for track day heroics. There are few, though, we'd want over this one if, say, late at night at an exclusive party in Cannes, we suddenly realised we needed to be in Paris at daybreak. For such a jaunt, this DB11 would be, well, just about perfect. Is this the most beautiful Aston Martin yet made? Some would say so. Even with the roof up, a DB11 Volante will attract admiring stares. And when the hood is down, well, let's show you. The top is retracted by pressing either a center console button or by using buttons on the key. It takes just 14 seconds to lower or 16 seconds to close. And on the move, it can be operated at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. The hood has eight layers and folds into an incredibly small sandwich, which allowed stylist Miles Nuremberger to make the rear deck particularly low, short and sleek. Just as significantly beneath the sweeping panel work sits a structure that's a massive 50% stiffer than that of the old DB9 Volante. And inside, well, it's a big improvement from what was served up by previous Aston Volante models. Exquisitely stitched leather combined with intricately fashioned design highlights to attract your attention and the different construction of the aluminium monocoque has freed up more interior space too. 
As usual, Aston has borrowed parts from another brand. In this case, it's technical partner Mercedes. The stalk off the steering wheel and this 8-inch center dash infotainment screen, for example. There's also a digital instrument binnacle screen to replace the usual dials with a central virtual rev counter that changes its graphics to suit the particular driving mode you've chosen from these two steering wheel buttons you get a pair of rear seats too, the kind of thing that some segment competitors make you do without. The brand insists that these are more accommodating than the pews provided by the previous Volante models, which is true, and has fitted them out with ISOFIX child seat attachments for the first time. But they're still pretty cramped and you get 23 millimetres less legroom than you would in the back of a DB11 coupe. Ultimately, as usual with a 2 plus 2 sports convertible, this space remains suitable for small children, jackets or designer shopping bags only. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now, the exact amount of room you get depends on the position of the roof. When it's down like this, this boot separator will also be down to fence off space for the folded roof sandwich. That reduces capacity to just 160 litres. When the roof's up, you can push up the boot separator and increase capacity to 206 litres. And in summary, well, there have been three basic eras in Aston Martin's existence. The early one, which lasted from the time that Lionel Martin and Robert Bamford established the brand in 1913 until the late 60s, a period when its products were at the cutting edge of what a classic GT sports car should be. Then there were the 70s, 80s, 90s and noughties when this famous nameplate traded on its heritage and produced sports cars the motoring press eulogised over, but which in truth weren't very good. In the last decade, though, the company's returned to being the kind of business its founders would recognise. We don't care that the mark has needed some help from Mercedes to do it, and nor should you. The DB11 Coupe showed us that Aston once again had a place at the top table of grand sports car design, and this Volante version confirms that impression. For us, it's the finest sporting convertible the brand has yet made, and that makes it very desirable indeed. <laughs>